have my notes here so I don't miss anything in this video because we're going to go through 10 things that you should consider when purchasing a PTZ camera. Number one, we have to determine the use case of your PTZ camera. What are you actually going to be using this for? Is it going to be for indoor ministry, nonprofit church events? Is it going to be for events, concerts? Is it going to be outdoors for graduation ceremonies or sporting events? You want to make sure that you identify what you plan on using your PTZ camera for because each of these cameras has different functionalities and certain functionalities work for certain use cases. So making sure that you identify why you're going to use a PTZ camera is going to be step one in this process. Go ahead in the comments section and let me know what you plan on using your PTZ cameras for. And if you are currently using these types of cameras, what are you using them for? Let me know. The next thing that we need to discuss is budget. How much money do you plan on spending on a PTZ camera? Now, these cameras can range in price from a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars. So establishing a budget before making your purchase is something that you definitely want to know ahead of time. The budget that you set aside is gonna be unique to you because your small budget may be a couple hundred dollars, whereas someone else's small budget could be a couple thousand dollars. So establishing your budget is one of the best things to bring to the table, especially if you're asking me for my opinion, because knowing that, then we can start to look at the options in that budget range. Now let's get into some of the technical aspects of things to consider when choosing your camera. And we're gonna start with image quality. Now, all of these cameras have the ability to at least stream and record at 1080p resolution, with some of these having the ability to stream and record at 4K. Now, in most cases, those individuals that are viewing our broadcasts and our live streams are not watching us in 4K, but some are, so it's something to consider. But in most cases right now in this current state of live streaming, 1080p is more than acceptable because some people that live outside of the US, in my case, actually watch their videos in lower resolutions, 720p and some even down to 480p depending on their internet connection. But I would recommend definitely having a camera that can stream at least 1080p. It's going to give you a better quality image. But if you want to future proof yourself and also have a little bit more range in some of the things you can do with your camera, you may want to consider a 4K camera. Now here in the studio, my primary PTZ camera is a 4K PTZ camera and I'm working on building out my 4K infrastructure. So that is one thing to keep in mind, that if you're going to go 4K, you also need the infrastructure to actually stream completely at 4K. Now, I'm excited to have a new piece of hardware show up soon, so if you're not subscribed to the channel, now would be a perfect time to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video when that new piece of gear arrives. Now, the next thing to consider technically is the zoom distance of our camera. Now, if you remember at the very beginning, I asked you all to put in the comments, what is the use case of your camera? Because if you're gonna be using this in a classroom setting or a smaller environment, you don't need a long zoom range. Some of these cameras can zoom 4X, 10X, or 12X, which is gonna be perfectly fine for a smaller classroom, a smaller conference room type of setting. But maybe you want to use your PTZ camera outdoors for a sporting event across a football field or maybe a baseball field or maybe inside in a large auditorium. That's where you may want to consider some of the further distances that these cameras can provide you. 20x, 25x and even 30x optical zoom. These cameras are going to give you the distance that you need to get closer to your subject and still have that great quality. Now, when looking at your cameras and deciding on which one you want to purchase, make sure you're looking at the optical zoom quality and the distance, because that is going to help you keep the resolution of your image. Some of these cameras do digital zooms, and with a digital zoom, every time you zoom in, you're essentially just cropping in your image and losing the resolution of your image the further you crop in. Now let's talk about the ports that are available on the back of these cameras. Because when you wanna plug these in to your computer or your video switcher, you wanna make sure that you have the connections that you need. And again, this is gonna be unique to your situation. 
if you're just going to be using one PTZ camera, it might benefit you to make sure that the only real connection that you have is a USB connection. This will allow you to take one USB cable connected directly from your camera and directly into your computer without using any video capture cards, which is one less piece of equipment that you would have to purchase. But if you're going to be using a multiple camera setup, you may want to consider using HDMI or SDI connections. HDMI is a common video connection that I use often when I'm using my video switchers. By connecting multiple cameras using HDMI into my video switcher that allows multiple HDMI connections, I can then run one cable from my video switcher into my computer versus trying to connect a whole bunch of these directly into my computer, which is just not a feasible option. So HDMI is a really good connection to have on your PTZ cameras. You can also consider SDI connections because if you're going to be using these at a very long distance, SDI is the more preferred cable that you would want to use. It allows you to take that video signal and run it an extremely long distance. But there's even one more connection that you can consider, which is having an ethernet connection on the back of your camera because you can connect your camera on your network and now you can just use your ethernet connection and have an extremely long distance and put these cameras just about anywhere in the world and connect to them. Now you're just connecting to the camera via its internal IP address on your network and being able to remotely access these cameras. So you have multiple different ways to connect your cameras, but the question is, how do you want to use them? Is it a simple one camera operation that would only require a USB connection or multiple cameras that might require HDMI or SDI, or maybe you want this camera in a remote location then you would want to make sure that it's connected over the network using the ethernet connection. Now, once you've established how you're going to connect your camera, now we need to control the camera. And there's different ways that you can control your camera. Most of these come with a remote control included in the box. So you can take your remote control, point it at the camera and move it from left to right to up to down, zoom in, zoom out and access all the menu controls. And in a simple scenario, this actually works pretty good. I even take my remote with me to remote locations just in case and it's an easy way to quickly establish the shots that I need for my cameras. But there are other ways to move your cameras and control them. One of which is using a dedicated PTZ controller. Now I love having multiple cameras and using a controller allows me to control multiple cameras from one physical device. Trying to control multiple PTZ cameras with the remote it's just not a really nice workflow in my opinion. It's possible, but it's not something I like to do. So having a controller that allows me to control multiple cameras is definitely my preferred route. Now, in order to do this, you actually need to make sure that your camera has the right connections. The first type of connection that you can consider is the RS-232 connection, which is a serial connection, and it allows you to connect a serial joystick to your PTZ camera. Now, in some cases, these cameras only have one RS-232 input. If this is the case, you're going to be limited to connecting just that one camera to your joystick. Because in order to connect two cameras in what's called daisy chaining your cameras together, you also need a RS-232 output. And if you only have the one input, you can't daisy chain your cameras together. Now, another way to control multiple cameras at the same time is to put the cameras on your network like we talked about a little bit earlier. If your cameras are on the same network, you can also put your PTZ controller on the same network and then access all the cameras on your network with your controller. This is the more preferred route, especially if you're in a static environment where you're not going to be constantly moving cameras and cabling. This is what I like to do here in the studio is put all my cameras on my network and then be able to control them because I can talk to them all over the network. Now, if I'm out in a remote location or doing client work, sometimes I'll actually use my serial connections and just physically daisy chain my cameras together because it can be a quicker setup in some cases. So it really just depends on the scenario that I'm in, but there are multiple ways to connect your cameras and that's the benefit of using these PTZs. 
Now you've heard me talk about networking these cameras and I know that can be intimidating. So I'll link up above to a video where I talked about how to set up your cameras and put them on the network because it's actually easier than you might think. And if you still need another video, just let me know in the comment section and I'll do an updated video to that one as well. But one of the things that I really like about having my cameras on a network and also specifically having a camera with NDI functionality is the fact that I can send my signal virtually across the network without any additional work. I can easily bring my camera into a software like Ecamm. I can easily bring it into a video switcher like the Yolo Box Ultra that accepts NDI connections over my network and it makes your workflow even easier. NDI is something that I definitely encourage you guys to start looking into for your production. And I'll leave a link to the NDI website where you can actually learn more. Now, this next tip is a really good one to consider because we're starting to see it more and more and more. And it's the power of AI. These cameras have now the ability for auto tracking. And this really helps you, especially if you're a one person operation and you need a little bit more of assistance when someone is running back and forth across the stage. These cameras allow you to put on tracking and have them auto follow the talent. And you can actually start and stop this manually with the remote control. You can even do custom presets on some PTZ controllers. And it allows you to have another camera operator essentially. And one of the things I really like about AI tracking is that it gives some movement to the camera shot. It's not a static shot anymore. It's a way to keep your audience engaged in the video because there's actually some movement happening. And if you study anything about TV production, they say at least every three seconds, you want a different camera angle or camera shot to keep your audience engaged in the content that they're watching. So using AI is a powerful thing in these cameras and more and more of these cameras are introducing it into their cameras. Again, the features that I'm talking about, you wanna make sure that your camera has the ability to do them before you go and purchase, not just hoping that they can do them. So definitely make sure that you look at the description section of the cameras, and I'll list these cameras in a link below because each of these cameras does do something a little bit different. And so you wanna make sure that you choose the right one. And if you still have questions, just let me know in the comment section. Now, as we get to the final couple tips of things to consider when buying your PTZ cameras, I wanna thank you guys that all subscribe and hit the like button in this video because by you doing that, vendors have sent over all of these PTZ cameras. So it allows me to be able to give you back all of this information and help you in the process of deciding which one is gonna be right for you. Now let's talk about some of the accessories that go with these PTZ cameras. Now, there's not a lot of hardware accessories, but there are a lot of software things to consider. Some of these camera manufacturers actually put out apps that allow us to download and be able to control our cameras through our mobile devices. So being able to log into your mobile device through the app and control it, change the settings, change the movements is pretty cool. It gives you more of a mobile workflow. So if you're in a situation where you can't necessarily get to your remote or to a physical controller, you can just log in through your app and be able to control your camera and all the different settings that you might need. Another way that I like to control my cameras in different settings is to log in through the software. Having a good software portal that's definitely easy to understand makes it fun and interactive to go in and really look at all the different settings that your camera has the ability to do. Sometimes trying to navigate through the menu on a remote is just not fun because you can't find what you're actually looking for, but the web interface for some of these cameras makes it so much easier to actually log into it and change anything, even control the camera and even turn on that AI tracking mode. So that is something I really like are good online accessories that I can have access to. So I like to be able to log in, especially if I have my cameras on the network because it's just so much easier to control everything looking at a bigger screen. Now, the last tip I wanna share with you is not hardware related, but it's more about the manufacturers themselves. Some of these camera companies do a really, really poor job in actually supporting us as customers. They have user manuals that are hard to understand. They have no customer support. 
it's just very difficult to have questions answered when you might actually have a question or you just need a little bit of assistance. And I mean a little bit of assistance and you never get an email back from the manufacturer. Where on the other hand, you have companies that are extremely great with their customer service. They have an online chat, they have a phone number that you can ask, they even have online Facebook communities that you can join and easily post your questions and you can even interact with people in the group that have the same types of cameras that you do and you can always get some feedback there as well. And even to go above and beyond, there are some companies that even put out regular YouTube videos that you can go and watch and see some of the updates and things that they have, not only their cameras, but their other infrastructure as well, which is something that we talked about a little bit earlier, because some of these camera manufacturers don't only just make the cameras, but they make the video switchers and some of the other physical hardware that we kind of need sometimes when it comes to video production. And I'll link to some of my favorite manufacturers in the comment section below. Now, if this video has been helpful for you, I look forward to seeing you in the next video as we continue to talk about some of the things that we can do with PTZ cameras and some of the other hardware components that I like to use alongside my PTZ cameras to make my workflow that much easier.